So from fashion we move to popular music, which right. to me it makes a lot of sense actually, because two things that are quite related. And we have the second data set that is called a uh, professionally annotated and enriched multimodal data set on popular music. Um, Marcus Schell, sorry about Schell, oh my god. <laughs> It's fine, it's, it's, it's always the same for me, so I'm, I'm never going to learn those things. Um, he will present. Uh, as before, try to make it 10 minutes, 12, 13. That's okay. good. So to answer your question uh, yes. beforehand, that's where you can find the data set. So we already put it on our own server, but we gladly accept, of course, the offer to, uh, to have it here on some other server. Uh, yeah, that's actually the quite long title of the paper, but I'd like to call it Oh, sorry. It's okay. I'd like to call it just Musical.ly 2012 Multimodal Music Dataset. So that's actually joint work with Cynthia Liam from Technical University of Delft. I just recognized that we have a similar color layout to that of TU Delft. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, and Nicolo Ario from University of Padova, as well as uh, Geoffroy Peters from IRCAM in Paris. So, before uh, coming to the actual data set, I'd like to give you a bit of background on the music evaluation campaigns. So, uh, we actually started back in 2011 and held the first music play. Uh, evaluation campaign together with uh, CLAY, so the Cross uh, Lingual Evaluation Forum. Uh, then we moved to Media Eval in 2012, and now for 2013 we changed the task a little bit, but are still uh, in conjunction with Media Eval. So actually, the main aim of these evaluation campaigns were to foster highly multimodal, novel, interesting, challenging. Uh, tasks in all aspects of music retrieval and recommendation. But there has been some additional aims or objectives. The first one is that we always strive to foster on professional application scenarios. Uh, for instance, in this particular case, it was an auto-tagging task, uh, meaning that we wanted to automatically label uh, music items, so textual, provide textual descriptors. <coughs> Uh, another thing that was really important for us is to grant the replication of uh, the data uh, gathering process, the feature extraction, but also an experiment and experimental results, of course. In addition, we wanted to, uh, to highlight and foster really the use of multimodal data sources. So in music information retrieval, it's quite common to work on, on content-based features, which are actually extracted directly from the audio signal. Uh, but recently there's been a trend to include much more, uh, a larger set of features. So for instance, we include tags and web pages and these things, so textual data sources. Well, and of course we also want to reach new audiences outside of the music information retrieval community. That's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> well, now for the task definition. It was actually that uh, uh, we had given a commercial music library that needed to be uh, uh, that needed to be labeled. So actually the songs that, uh, in the repository needed to be <coughs> labeled, which was done originally by, by professionals in the TV and broadcasting uh, area. So the motivation was that this is a quite tedious task if you have to do it manually, of course, but it's the major activity for music professionals, of course. So many broadcasting TV uh, <coughs> companies employ a lot of professionals to do this tedious task. Well, there are, of course, also some collaborative filtering systems that can be used to facilitate this task, but on the other hand, you all know uh, they have some limitations, like a uh, cold start problem or the particular hardness if you want to label music that is not so popular, so in the long tail, which is particularly true for production music. Yeah, and of course, it's also an important professional activity. So that's an illustration about what the task is about. So it's an auto-tagging task. And the general outline is that you have given some digital audio as input, or maybe also some other uh, kinds of multimedia items, like uh, feature, uh, like tags, or 
uh, collaborative tags or web pages, for instance. Then you do some feature extraction, followed sometimes by some dimensionality reduction methods. And then you obtain some audio features. Uh, you train a machine learner of your choice with the audio features and the label tags. And this will give you a tag model. And then in the testing phase, of course, you do the same for the test set create some audio features, use the tag model for classification, and then do some evaluation. But now, for the actual Musical.ly 2012 dataset. So we started using the Rolling Stone 500 greatest songs of all time, so they're quite popular. <laughs> <laughs> so we avoided the long tail effect, at least. <laughs> This gives us uh, 214 artists, artists sorry, from which we extracted a total of uh, 1,355 tracks. And then actually we provided different kinds of features or metadata. So on the artist level, we performed web searches using major search engines, extracted web pages in different languages. I think it was six languages. And we provided and we provided the URL uh, together with a Lucene index and some rather primitive TFIDF feature weighting. So that much for the artist level, and uh, we did the same for the album level too. And on the track level, we provide editorial metadata, so artist name, title, and also link to the music brains ID, uh, which actually allows uh, allowed participants to use more features because music brains is a huge uh, information system about music and yeah so that's quite commonly used then of course content-based features audio features play an important role so we used rather low-level features like FPML and ML frequency substrate coefficients uh, but we also included two state-of-the-art uh, features feature extractors for music similarity computation so those two were actually the best performing features in the annually run uh, Myrex competition, which is Music Information Retrieval Evaluation Exchange. Well, and we also provide a set of uh, annotations. On the one hand, manual an annotations by experts, so that was actually also our ground truth. And as you can see, uh, this is quite comprehensive. So experts had to choose from 167 genres and almost 300 different moods. So that's also a particularity of this data set. So it's not about like pop rock classical, so it's really very <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> and using the Music Brains ID, uh, we also gathered collaborative tags from Last.fm and also point, uh, included links to the MSD, that's the Million Song data set. So it's recently established. Uh, tries to establish a standardized data set in the music domain. So in detail, I already told you we included metadata, we included these different uh, low-level features, as well as the state-of-the-art features. And here I'd like to give you some examples uh, of genre tags. So as you can see, there are quite specific ones, partly at least. Bossa Nova, Slight Blues, don't ask me what it is. Never heard it, sorry. <laughs> And also moods, as you can see there, some of them are very particular to this broadcasting and uh, TV domain, as you have alarm, danger, glamour, military, scary, and so on. So they're really, really right. very particular. Well, we used uh, the get top tags function to obtain tags and weights on the track level from Last.fm, which we provide. <coughs> And in order to obtain the web pages, we just used Google API to uh, crawl a set of web pages uh, in those languages, in English, German, Swedish, French, Italian, and Spanish. Also reflecting uh, the uh, languages of the uh, co-authors, <laughs> of course. <laughs> As you might have guessed. <laughs> So yeah, I'm a big fan of Scandinavia, so we included Swedish. <laughs> well, uh, and for the album name, we just uh, restricted the search to the English language because otherwise it would be hard to get a lot of data. Well, we also provided the reference code, uh, which aimed at serving as a baseline. So we included audio, web, and last.fm features 
For audio, we used the simple mill frequency substrial coefficients and the symmetrized Kolbeck Leibler divergence. For the web features, we just used this primitive uh, TFIDF weighting of terms on the web pages. And last of, for last of M, we also just used the tag weights. Uh, and of course, for the text sources, the standard cosine similarity measure to measure similarity. For classification, we also use the quite primitive uh, one nearest neighbor classifier. And uh, the categories to classify are actually the tags were categorized into nine different categories, uh, which was done manually, foremost by Cynthia, <laughs> admittedly. So uh, as you can see, they were like uh, describing particular activities or uh, particular occasion, uh, occasions or atmospheric uh, settings. And here are actually the results of the reference codes. Uh, some points to note, the F measure is in general quite low, which is not a big surprise because that's a really challenging task, especially given the about 400 different labels to sign to. Audio alone, quite surprisingly, performed quite well already. That's actually the blue line. But I guess that's also, that can also partly be explained by the very uh, dumb text-based approaches, so to say. So of course, we could just have taken uh, the last of M text directly for prediction, but we construct TFIDF vectors on the weights. But we really wanted to have some baseline approach. That uh, was the reason why we went for this one. And what you can also see, good thing, is that uh, fusion of the different data sources at least outperformed uh, audio a little bit. Well, as for the future plans, uh, we want to include data harvested from microblogs, so from Twitter. Uh, I'm going to present an ECIR paper uh, on extracting listening histories from Twitter too, later in Moscow this year. And of course, uh, since web pages and collaborative tags changes quite frequently, we have to recrawl the data and would also like to include uh, image data, so for instance, album cover artwork or uh, images of bands. Well, also a little bit of advertisement. <laughs> so we'll be running a Musical.ly in 2013 again to uh, go together with the video of the commercial. It will be, of course, hard to evaluate, but I guess we can do some crowdsourcing and ask real users. And finally, I'd like to thank all those organizations without which uh, it would have been hard to uh, run this task. So, Tusen Tak. Thank you very much. So, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions? I was very surprised actually to learn that there are so many kinds of music that I was not even aware of. Um, yes. I might have missed something, but is it true that, uh, go back to the evaluation, uh, yes. is it true that, uh, is it, does it mean a tag-based retrieval works worse than audio-based retrieval? Yeah, that's actually because, uh, as I said, we used a very dumb approach. So we could have used the collaborative tags directly for predicting the tags, but we decided since this should be, should uh, or aimed at serving at a baseline approach, we decided to construct simple uh, weight vectors for each artist. Okay. Which of course leads to the fact that very popular tags like rock and pop always are ranked first. And this doesn't really fit very well the, the large amount of categories. Good, thank you very much again. Thank you. And <laughs>